Professor Pringle? Sir? It's our wish that I express our sorrow, our sorrow and deep regret that Mrs. Pringle is no more. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, um, Romeo and Juliet, please. Uh, Isham, if you could read from where we left off the other day. That's uh, Act 4, Scene 4. Thank you. All things that we ordained? Yes, yes, ordained. All things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells. Our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast. Our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change. Our bridal flower serve for a barrack course, and all things change them into the country. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Uh. Where's Guy? Gone for a walk. He never goes for walks. Nonetheless, that's where he's gone. Do you think, in the circumstances, that Harriet would want me to console Guy? I have no idea. How do you propose to console him? He might go to a dinner dance at the Continental Savoy. Does he dance? Guy, I don't uh, think Guy is one of nature's dancers. Hmm, perhaps not. But he could eat the meal. I hate death and everything to do with it. You feel that? No. You feel that? No. Fine. How long since you've copped it, sir? About a month. About a month. I see. First I thought my legs had been blown off. That's what happened to my brother. He died, of course. I didn't, did I? Of course you didn't. I'd like to have someone visit me. Well, let's know the name and address, and we'll let whoever it is know. Him? Her? Her. Excellent. What's the young lady's name? She was my brother's girlfriend, the one who had his legs blown off. How long will it be? I'm sorry? Before we know, about my legs. You say it's a month? Yes. Well, you begin worrying after five weeks.
Where would I find Simon Boulderstone? Oh, come this way. There he is, miss. Oh, thank you. Hello, Simon, dear. You haven't forgotten me, have you? How could I? All the time I was out there, I was thinking about you. Oh, <laughs> Simon, really? You aren't cross with me for saying that. Are you embarrassed because of that chap? Which chap? Lord... Peter, uh, I can't remember his other name. <laughs> That's all over now. Not that there was ever anything to be over. I much preferred Hugo. Hugo? Of course. You're so like him. Your face, the way you speak, everything. Our legs? Sorry, I don't understand. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song. I've been here in plegics. I've been here a month. After five weeks, you start to worry. Beautiful. It's so depressing going to that hospital. You ill? No, I went to see Simon Boulderstone, the young officer that was here just before Christmas. Mm. He asked me to visit him. Goodness knows why, I scarcely know him. And he wants me to visit him again. Oh, and he frightens me. He knew Harriet better than me. She'd be the perfect person to visit him. Oh, I'm sorry, Guy, I'm so stupid. Yes. It's all right. Sorry, I didn't realize. It's all right. I was just leaving, sir. Hello, Guy Pringle. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I'm deputizing for Edwina, uh, who, who sent these. Um, and uh, and the, the and I, I brought you these. I, I can get some more from the Institute Library. If well, I'm not much of a reader. It, well, it does, does, doesn't matter. I can um, uh, leave them. I'd like to look at them. Edwina has a, a migraine. She, uh, 
She has a migraine Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, uh, whereas I never have a migraine, but uh, then I'm not quite as pretty. Uh. <laughs> it's very good of you to come. <laughs> How's Harriet? I still remember climbing the pyramids with her. She, she, she's dead. But she can't be. Well, um, she, she was on a, um, uh, an evacuation, uh, ship that, um, that, uh, that, that was torp torpedoed. And, uh, and nobody was saved, saved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. People are dying all the time now. Young people. Not people you might expect to die people with their lives before them. <laughs> I could say to you, keep your pecker up, old chap. <laughs> but I won't. You promise. I promise. Is there something wrong? I don't know. Would you do something for me? Yes, of course. I... Could you lift up the blankets and tickle my feet? Tickle your feet? Yes, please. Well, of course I would. <laughs> Can you feel it? <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> What's all this? Happiness. <laughs> I'm tickling his feet. He's tickling my feet. <laughs> Can I have a go? Give us a tickle, sir. <laughs> Well, unless our orders have changed. In which case, we will. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, who's this chap you're looking for, then? Aidan Pratt. He's in the pay corps. He's stationed here. Oh, they'll know where to find him. And if you ask them nicely, they might get a message to your husband. Guy. Oh, he thinks I'm on a ship going to England. He won't be expecting a message for at least two months. Up to you. Mind how you go. Here, take care of yourself. Thank you so much. TTFN. Bye. Captain Aidan Pratt, he's in the pay call. Just a moment. Harry? Captain Aidan Pratt. Sarge? Sorry, miss, he's been transferred. Can you tell me where he's gone? Sorry, miss, can't help you. Uh, not allowed to reveal movements of army personnel. Well, are you allowed to tell me what that noise is? Rifle fire, miss. Who's firing? The wads, they're always ticking. What's it like in Damascus? Same as everywhere else, miss. A lot of bloody foreigners. I see. Is it safe? Safe as any other place, miss. Right. 
was extraordinary, this sense of a human being coming to life again. So you thought you'd try it? One has to live by example. Hmm. And coming to life in this case consists in uh, going out with Edwina, hmm? Well, in time I shall think of something more constructive, I dare say. Ready! You haven't changed. Well, this is what you might call it. I see. Well, we're only going for a fish supper, and you can't wear that thing. You gave it to me. It's vulgar. It's just a cheap theatrical prop. It's pretty. Belong to Harriet. Oh. I see. Well, in that case, you'd better have it back. Am I all right now? Yes, you're fine. Have a wonderful evening. I'd say it was going to be a fish supper in the burka. Well, you can't have a fish supper without a fish restaurant. This is a fish restaurant which just happens to be in the burka. I mean, it'd be full of friends. Come on. Ah, sweet sherry! Hello, brother, sir. I bring a good fish for you. See? Very good. Abdo, at the cartel bay. Professor Pringle. Sir. Ah, it's an honor to have you in our midst. Well, it is equally an honor that you should welcome me. You like everybody, don't you? Of course, why not? Shokran. Now, um, are you interested in food? The, uh, the house red is very acceptable. Good God, there's Aiden. I might have guessed there'd be an Aiden. Aiden! <coughs> Guy. Edwina, this is Aiden Sheridan, the actor. For military purposes, he calls himself Captain Aiden Pratt. Aiden Sheridan? Will you please join us? Well, I thought you were in Damascus. Well, I've been transferred to Jerusalem. How exciting. Moderately exciting. But I'm always Harriet. <laughs> You haven't split up, have you? <laughs> she was on an evacuation ship that was sunk. She's dead. Thank you. No, please, not for me. I have to go. I'm booked on the night train. Um, it's a very great pleasure to meet you. I'm so sorry. I'll have to go and talk to him. I'll be two minutes. <laughs> I'm going to assure you I've shed more tears than I thought possible. No, I'm just trying to reconstruct myself, I suppose. Yes, yes, I understand. Why did you think that Harriet and I might have split up? It's nothing. There must have been a reason for you to say that. I met Harriet in Luxor. She didn't look well, but she didn't look happy either. Well, she was unhappy. She didn't say so, but... I hate this god of war. Does anybody like it? I suppose it must end one day. Oh, I wonder. It could go on forever. We may hate the Germans' cause, but they're brave warriors. They'll fight from town to town, house to house, doorway to doorway. I don't see the Japanese giving in easily either. It could be like the Hundred Years' War, eventually dying of boredom and exhaustion. <laughs> Do you really believe that? Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? What's lost is lost. Like my career. Oh, ignore me. I'm talking nonsense. It's already too late. If I ever work in the theatre again, it'll be too late. Can't be promising and middle-aged. What happened? 
Will you uh, come to see me in Jerusalem? I don't think that'll be possible. I'm going to be very busy learning to walk again. I'm sorry, figuratively speaking. I could help you learn to uh, walk again. Well, you know me, always too busy. In the summer. Come for holiday. I don't have time for holidays. Or for me. Bye, guy. I'm so sorry. I, uh, I lost track of time. Tony Brody, Guy Pringle. How do you do? How do you do? Saw this beautiful creature apparently dining alone. Took the liberty of introducing myself. English must stick together. Don't you think? Oh, yes, yes. I, I've heard it's a terribly good thing. Would you care to join us in a nice fish supper? Um, I think I'll stick to the house red. Inside the Great Mosque. I see. May I offer you my protection? Is that necessary? I'm an Englishwoman. It would be a great honor to explain the mosque. Thank you. You must wear this. You must put the veil over your hair. Why must I cover my hair? With the deepest of respect, the sight of a lady's hair may distract the men from their devotions. You can't make men chaste by keeping women out of sight. You are an unusual lady. You have a mind of your own. Where I come from, that's not unusual. Take careful note of the beautiful mosaic Kebla. No human figure, no animal, no creature that could be mistaken as an object of worship. Because of the ancient Egyptians, I suppose. Indeed, yes. You can hit the nail very nicely, Miss. Mrs. Mrs. Pringle. There has been much destruction. The mosque is very old. Look at the inscriptions in the alabasters. Can you read Arabic when it is decorative? I can't read Arabic at all. 
In the name of God, ye who believe, bow down, prostrate yourselves, and adore your Lord, and do good that ye may prosper. It was true in the seventh century, and still true, is it not? Why do you think God let the Muslims take over? We must not question the will of God. Perhaps, Mrs. Pringle, you will permit me to take you to a very nice cafe for cakes and coffee. Is it the will of God? Everything is the will of God, Mrs. Pringle. In that case, yes. <laughs> About. He sings, who is Romeo, who is Julieta. I see. An old song. I think a very old song. It's very beautiful here. Damascus encircled by gardens, as the moon by its halo. Are you a poet? Alas, it was not me, but another, who wrote the deathless tribute to our city. May I ask you, Mrs. Pringle, why you came here alone? I wasn't feeling well. I decided a change of air would be good for me. You took the Damascus Road. Exactly. And your husband? He did not take the Damascus Road. His work kept him in Egypt. So, you will stay with us till you are restored? No, I think until my money runs out. I see. You know, Mrs. Pringle, you are like the new moon. Thin and pale? Delicate. You shimmer like the moon. Harriet Pringle! <laughs> Angela! What are you doing here? She's on the brink of joining the whole region. Don't be silly. <laughs> You're supposed to be on a ship to England. I, know. I changed my mind. <laughs> I took an ammunition lorry to Damascus instead. <laughs> and now you Climb in! Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you for your protection. I think friendship between nations is the only way forward for the world. Do you not agree, Mrs. Pringle? Yes, I do agree. Goodbye. <laughs> How are things in Cairo? No idea. We left before you did. Where are you staying? An ATS hostel. Oh, my God. But huh. well, you must move in with us at the ground. I can't afford it. Angela can. She can afford me, and I drink far more than you do. And it'll be good for Bill's ego. Two beautiful women in tow. Just in time for a drink. <laughs> Whatever they are, day or night, we're always just in time for a drink. I think I'd like a drink. It must be getting better. Harriet, it's so good to see you again. It's good to see you. It's good for us all to see each other. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of
speaking as people who are highly expert in the art of walking out on their spouses, have you left Guy? I'm here. He's in Cairo. He doesn't know I'm here. Perhaps I have. But I didn't mean to. That's much clearer, but have you left Guy? I had to get away from him. I couldn't stand his devotion to the outside world. I was tied to him, but I was always alone. You needed 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Something like that. Well, this is quite an acceptable wilderness. Don't you think so? Yes. I still don't know what to do. I'm thinking of marrying Tony Brody. Good heavens. He's a nice man, and he's a major. Well, you can do better than Brody, surely. All the really exciting men have gone to Tunisia, and I don't think they're coming back. Oh, oh something will turn up. I've already waited too long. I'm not getting any younger. True. The bees aren't buzzing around quite as they used to. <laughs> you are a beast, Dobby. <laughs> there, there, there. Uncle Dobby's only joking. You're still as beautiful as a dream. But if you can't marry who you want to marry, does it matter who you marry? Ask Guy. He's the expert. Shall I marry Tony Brody? Yeah, yeah, probably. Well, that's settled. Thank you, Guy. I'm deeply grateful. Guy, put your book down. I've got something to tell you. What about the ship? No, not about the ship. About um, Aidan Sheridan or Aidan Pratt, whatever you like to call him. Well, just Aidan. He's dead. Oh, God, everybody's dead these days. I was in the embassy overnight when the news came through. He shot himself. Well, that's, um, that's quite a dramatic gesture. I think he killed himself because of a broken heart. Did you know him? Hmm. Met him with Guy. Well, why should he have a broken heart? Uh, he was fond of Harriet, but... He wasn't in love with Harriet. I must be off. Um, I'm due at the hospital. You haven't eaten anything. I'm not hungry. Uh, I'll see you later on. Did you mean that? Of course. Poor fellow is absolutely besotted by Guy. Like everybody else. Goodness knows why. Oh, damn it, I think I will marry Tony Brody. Right then, lads, that's your lot. Back to the barrack room at the dump. Come on, work at it. I'm working at it. Hands off the bars. I can't. You can feel your feet, can't you? Well, I know that they're there, but they're sort of ghostly. Think of them as solid flesh and blood and tell them to get on with it. All you have to do is forget you can't do it. Let's do it again. Oh, your nursemaid's here. He can't come out to play yet. He hasn't earned it. Now, 
Malona Tarif. I had a very interesting conversation with your drill sergeant the other day. <laughs> you did well. I never have conversations with him. He shouts and I quiver. He recommends swimming. He's a very good therapist. And he told me that. He also told me that there was nowhere for us to swim. Well, there is a pool at the Anglo-Egyptian Union, you know. Mm. Shall, I, uh, shall I take you there one day? No. I could arrange it, you know. I am a member. I'd even pay my subscription. I'll go to your swimming pool when I'm like the other people who go to your swimming pool. Forget you can't do it. That's all you have to do. Forget you can't do it. That's all anybody has to do. Forget you can't do it. I did it. It's a start. I'm going to climb it. Well, now, if you look after that for me. Well, you don't think I'm going to let you go alone, do you? Good share. <laughs> I'll race you. Oh, right. at Harriet's way. <laughs> I did it. I bloody did it! <laughs> <laughs> and so did I. It's ludicrous. <laughs> Well, Harriet spoke to you. Did she, uh... Did she ever talk about... being unhappy, or...? No. Not unhappy. Was well, something else lonely? Not lonely. Alone. I don't know, does it? Come on. Just get a move on and we'll get sunstroke. So you think they'll have me back in active service? <clears throat> Is that what you want? I'm supposed to be a soldier. <laughs> War is an abomination. But I can almost envy you. <laughs> envy me? Ridiculous. You know what to do. Come on. <laughs> It 
entrancing. Guy? What? Tell Edwina she's beautiful. Edwina, you're beautiful. You're supposed to look at her when you say it. Oh, yes, very beautiful. That dress was something special. My wedding. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I really wanted a big wedding at the cathedral, but Tony's so stingy. Well, he has an ex-wife to support. So he keeps telling me. We won't even have an arch of swords. Just a simple ceremony at the consulate. What was your wedding like, Guy? Oh, just a simple ceremony at the registry office and an arch of empty beer bottles. <laughs> but next time, you'd want something better. No, there won't be a next time. I don't think I'm the marrying kind. You're quite sure about that? Yes. You can't rebuild society and be a married man as well. I see. Well, in that case, I might as well go ahead and marry Tony Brody. And you can have a reception here afterwards. Can I? You can have a 30 guests, a cake from Groppies and Cypress Champagne. Oh, <laughs> Dobby, you're a darling. It's less than you hope for, I'm afraid. It's also less than you deserve. An absolute darling. I know. I've decided to write my memoirs. Really? What are you going to put in them? Am I disturbing you? No. Where's Angela? Siesta. When she sleeps, I work on my poems. More than one? I'm saving them up until I have another slim volume. Good. Guy showed me some of your poems after we'd first met you. The most powerful and passionate voice since William Blake. Is that what you were going to say? There was one about a dead cat I quite enjoyed. Don't upset me, Harriet. Or you won't be asked to the office outing. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's Easter. We thought it might be quite nice to go to church. Oh, I'd like that. Shouldn't be taking me 
back to Cairo. You need to go to Cairo, we've got a car. You feeling any better, darling? Because I believe in speaking the truth, however painful. No, I am not. It's your own fault. Shellfish are bad for you, whiskey's bad for you. You will insist on both all the time. I couldn't possibly give up whiskey. I'll give up shellfish. Get me behind me, crustacean! Something to tell you. Come on, have a drink. Listen, you bastard. Steady. Angela's outside in the car. With Harry. What do you mean? Precisely what I say. She wasn't on that boat. We found her in Syria. She's outside in the car. If this is a joke, I think I'll murder you. Dobbo. Do you think I'd joke about a thing like this? Oh, I'll fetch her. She was my best friend. Marvellous. At my wedding. I wasn't sure you'd want me back. Do you still think I'm as mad as a hatter? Yes, probably. But I prefer you to any 12 sane people I can think of. I'm a sane person? Yes, well, there are always exceptions. Harriet! Look what I found. Did Edwina return it? I think I asked her for it. Mm. Time we were going. Going? 
Where are you going? Well, I promised Simon a lift to the hospital and then I have to mm. talk to some young Egyptians. Coleridge or Shakespeare? Self-determination. <laughs> you can't! Harriet comes back from the dead and... And you want to talk to a whole load of Egyptian troublemakers? Well, they're first-class people. One of them is Shafiq, <laughs> Harriet's old doctor. <laughs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> doctor. What did you say, darling? <coughs> For Christ's sake! Get it! I'll telephone. A do doctor! Look after your friend. She is, I think, of an unstable temperament. She will need support. She will get support. Good. Please, wait here. I will uh, send your friend to join you in a few minutes. She is not Mr. Castlebar's wife, I think. Correct, she's not. I'm Mr. Castlebar's wife, and I demand to see him. So. Mr. Castlebar has two wives. That is nothing to me, he can have four. But he is a sick man. You must not disturb him. I won't disturb him, but by God, I'll disturb that bitch. They're going to operate. Thank you, my God. Perforated bowel. With Mona standing guard over the surgeon. She stands guard over most of Egypt. Ready? Well, where are you going? Um, to the hospital to see Bill. Hello, Dobson. But I thought... My friend Dr. Shafiq is going to smuggle us in at the back door. Yes. Lovely. How are you? Angela. I'm sorry. Accept our prayers on behalf of the soul of thy servant departed, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of thy saints. Do you see what that Jesus woman had written Christ on her inscription? Amen. I never read inscriptions. Fondest memories of Wolfie from Lamkin. That's why I never read inscriptions. What did you write in yours? Nothing. Good. Come on. You're a good man, Tommy. So I'm told. now. Apparently, Lamkin has hired a large marquee and a pianist who plans to sing to the mourners. I have to go to a meeting. You next can't. Time. Simon goes to Tunisia tomorrow. We may never see him again. I don't mind, really. I know where we should go. I don't really want to go anywhere. Where? Probably not. 